Get a load of this thing. This Noctua Thermosiphon prototype cooler has boiling coolant inside the CPU block and uses physics magic to circulate said coolant around the system without a pump. It's not exactly a new idea. Der Bauer showed off this phase change cooler prototype six years ago, and Ragentech made enough progress on their pumpless concept that they even sent me an early sample to test. Neither of those designs ultimately made it to market, but it shows that companies have been hard at work on this for a very long time. But why? Well, because every pump on Earth has two things in common. One, it makes noise, and two, it will eventually die. So going back almost 20 years now, the holy grail of silent, reliable PC liquid cooling has been to find a way to circulate the coolant with no moving parts. Cool, you might say, but why should I get my hopes up this time? Because this time, Noctua says, not only is it going to happen, but they believe that with some science, they can actually achieve performance that is on par with an actively pumped AIO liquid cooler. I need to take a closer look at this. After this close look at our sponsor. Corsair. Their platform for Elevate is anything but a generic sit-to-stand desk. It stands out, pun intended, with its modular T-channel rail system that allows you to mount a whole variety of accessories. Check it out using our link down below. Right away, Noctua was careful to disclaim that this unit is non-final, so they can't give any raw performance numbers. But it's also clear that it can't be that bad. Under that boiling fluid is a Ryzen 9 9800X3D CPU running a live gaming demo without overheating. I mean, this is not quite the same as running a 100% CPU load in a real case, but what it shows is that Noctua has gotten at least as far as anybody else in achieving pumpless water cooling. Or should I say fluid cooling? Noctua is collaborating with Calios, the same aerospace cooling company that helped design Streecom's passive cooling case that we checked out recently. And while Noctua was quick to point out that their implementation is different and shouldn't have the uh, weird noise issue, Calios' specialty is two-phase passive cooling systems where they leverage the evaporation of a liquid to transfer heat and force coolant to circulate to a heat exchanger or a condenser where fans can cool it back to a liquid state before it makes its way back to the heat source. So then it all looks great, right? What's holding them back? Well, boiling a liquid, it turns out, is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it dramatically increases the thermal energy that the coolant can capture and take away to the condenser. But on the other hand, it creates pockets of gas on the copper surface of the cooler that act as an insulator, making it hard for the liquid coolant to ever make contact with the heat source. And the hotter the heat source, the more vigorous the bubble formation. Adding another layer of inconvenience is the fact that CPUs do not heat up uniformly. There are hot spots right above the dyes where the most heat is generated. And these are the areas where, ironically, it's also the most important to maintain excellent thermal transfer. So you've got this more vigorous boiling occurring right where you need your cooling the most. Noctua says that if there was a perfect CPU that heated up uniformly, they could be finished development on this already. So what can they do? Well, first, they had to try to fix the uneven distribution of heat coming up through the CPU's heat spreader by both trying to speed up thermal transfer in the cool spots and slow it down in the hot spots, which flies completely in the face of conventional cooling dust practices where for forever, the goal has been to bring heat pipes and water block fins as close to the hot spot as possible. After that, the next goal was to improve the effective cooling surface area. 
Now, in a normal water block, this was achieved by using ever thinner surface structures, which eventually resulted in coolers that literally created their fins by shaving the top of the copper and then folding up the slices in a process called skiving. The issue with this, for this application, is that the smaller the surface structures, the more little tiny nooks and crannies exist to trap bubbles, destroying any hope of efficient thermal transfer. Now, one solution to this problem is to use impingement jets that accelerate the liquid before it hits the copper surface, which will dislodge any bubbles and also increase turbulent flow, which aids heat transfer. But, uh, <clears throat> small problem. You may or may not have noticed this, but there's no pump to provide the necessary head pressure. And we don't want to pump because then, A, we would risk accidentally circulating the fluid too fast, which would throw away the advantage of evaporative cooling. And also, then we'd have a pump, which was kind of the whole point, right? Counterintuitively then, the prototype thermosiphon is using much, much taller copper structures than a typical water block would in an effort to leave enough space for the bubbles to escape and then for liquid to be able to penetrate all the way to the base of the block. With those challenges out of the way, the last big one is to find the optimal shape that maximizes coolant flow. They don't need nearly as much flow as a traditional AIO water cooler, but more is still generally more better when it comes to heat transfer. There's no word on case compatibility or exactly when this thing will launch, but hey, Noctua has a mostly pretty good track record for actually launching the things they show off, so... Uh... Oh, I guess I'm in the Noctua booth, so I should probably talk about the fans on the condenser. Thanks to its high torque motor and progressive bend impeller, the A12X25 Gen 2 excels in high resistance applications where Noctua found three and a half degree better temperatures at the same noise level compared to their last gen or the same performance for a one to three decibel difference in noise. Pricing is expected to be the same as Gen 1 at 34.90 euros and who the f knows US dollars due to the ever evolving tariff situation. I was telling Noctua they should get into crystal balls, then they could give me an answer on that. There will be two versions, a slightly faster one and a slightly slower one that will help to counteract the undesirable harmonics of having two identical speed fans that operate right next to each other or on a push-pull cooler. These same fans were present on a variety of products around the booth, including Noctua's upcoming AIO liquid cooler. I um, am not the only one who was surprised to see this, and for a number of reasons. For starters, Noctua has always maintained that a heat pipe air cooler is capable of equal or even better performance compared to an AIO. And for another, instead of designing their own pump, they actually opted to partner with Acetec on a design that uses the same Gen 8 platform as other vendors. Like, what? You guys literally make motors and impellers for a living. But according to Noctua, water impellers are a lot less similar than you would think to air impellers. And after a year of trying to tune the performance and acoustics of the pump, they determined that there just wasn't much that they could do to it. Which isn't to say that they're just slapping their logo onto a Gen 8 reference design. The special sauce is in this cover. Instead of a screen, or <laughs> several screens, Noctua has designed a three-layer acoustic blocker that acts as a tuned mass damper, helping to reduce vibrations at least in one direction. There isn't really much that they can do about any vibrations that will pass through their Secufirm mounting system into the motherboard, but in total, they are expecting a few decibel reduction in noise, especially uh, <clears throat> compared to competitors who have large plastic structures on top of their blocks that actually serve to amplify pump noise and vibrations. The last innovation, in typical Noctua fashion, is to put a fan on it. <laughs> Using guiding fins around the AIO cover, this magnetically mounted 80 millimeter fan is designed to cool down your motherboard VRMs and your system memory. The whole setup comes with a six year warranty and will be available in 2026. As for pricing, they literally said, don't worry about that. So I'm doing the exact opposite and worrying a lot. <laughs> the final element of the Noctua booth is actually probably the most exciting to me. And it was all of the non-Noctua products that they were showing off. 
Noctua has really ramped up their partnerships over the last few years, and they were showing off everything from the Noctua equipped power supplies that we saw over at Seasonic, to a refreshed 50 series Noctua Edition GPU, to this incredible looking Antec case, to a Pulsar gaming mouse that has an integrated 40 millimeter cooling fan. I generally love Noctua's engineering first approach to product design, and I'm always happy to see their unsightly brown and tan fans making other people's products just a little bit cooler and a little bit quieter. I'm also happy to see our sponsor. Micro Center, rated number one in PC Mag's 2024 Reader's Choice Awards, it's clear that Micro Center is the place to shop for your next gaming or work setup. With close to 30 locations all over the US, they've been dishing out deals and providing excellent customer service, technical knowledge, and support for decades. Speaking of deals, from now until the end of May, they have deep discounts on over 150 desktop PCs, like this absolute baller gaming rig, or this space-saving all-in-one solution, both from HP. And residents of the Bay Area rejoice! Their new Santa Clara location is set to open anytime now. So use our links in the description to shop Micro Center's May desktop deals, and to make sure you get your free flash drive when you check out their new Santa Clara location. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, why not check out the time we covered that one infamous product that Noctua never managed to bring to market. It really did look really cool. It had active noise cancellation on a heatsink. Like, what?